Lord, you are my shelter. You're the peace in the time of storm. Oh, Lord, you're my He's way your savior. Maker. He's just peace in the time of storm. Father, we thank you. For there is none like you, not on heaven, not in heaven, and not on earth. Amen. We thank you because you're a mighty good God. You're a matchless king. You're an everlasting father. We give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Now speak to our hearts today, God, that we may say what you want us to say, do what you want us to do, and be what you want us to be. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus before you sit down this morning. Come on and celebrate the name of Jesus. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. I know this is young people day, this is youth day, but I'm feeling an old soul rising up in me this morning. I I'm feeling an old soul. Sister Turner, something about that old soul, that, that old preaching, you know, that old preaching about the blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost and Jesus' name. How many remember that preaching? It was that type of preaching that brought you here. It was that type of preaching that made a way. Kim asked me if we we're going to need towels for a demonstration. The only demonstration we're going to have today is a demonstration of the name of Jesus and a demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Someone say, if it had not been for the Holy Ghost, which was on my side. Is there anybody in here that know if it had not been for the Lord? Hey! Philippians, Philippians, the second chapter. And the ninth through the eleventh verse. Philippians, the second chapter, the ninth through the eleventh verse says. Wherefore God hath also or also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at that name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue shall confess I'm sorry every knee shall bow of the things of heaven and the things in earth and under the earth verse 11 and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Go to Acts chapter number 4, verses 7 through 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name? Have you done this? Keep going. Then Peter, and I want you to see this, filled with what? <laughs> Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the, to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Keep going. Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does man, this man stand before you whole. Keep going. This is the stone which was set at naught. You builders, which is become the head of the cornerstone. One more, Seth. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And just touch your neighbor again and say, neighbor, there's still something about that name. Come on, celebrate the name of Jesus. There is still something about that name. We must understand that life brings a lot 
of busyness. It, it, it has become so fast paced, and I'm very guilty of this, that because of our natural lives, we neglect our spiritual life. I found it even in myself, I'll spend more time preparing for a basketball game, which didn't help me much on last week. But I'll spend more time preparing for a basketball game than at times preparing for what God is trying to tell me through the word of God. And we have become so enamored by life and what life can bring us that we fail to understand that the only thing that we can receive is only by the grace of God. Uh -huh. When we do not not forget that it was the grace of God that brought us here, Andre, we understand when we know that it's the grace of God that's brought us, we will find ourselves wanting to know more about him. Amen. But life happens to all of us. Is there anybody in here that life has ever happened to? Sometimes you think that you're up, but life happens and it brings you down. Amen. Uh, you think that when everything is going okay, Diane, as soon as life happens, we have a setback. Oh, yes, but I heard someone say that a setback is only a setup for a blessing. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. Your setback is only a setup to be blessed. back to the times of Jesus. The times when the preacher would get to the microphone and he wouldn't say a whole lot of words, but he would just start to say Jesus. And it was like a contagious spirit would come over the house of God. He would get to the microphone and say, is there anybody in here that knows Jesus? And the church begins to think about everything Jesus has done for them. And so he said, it was by the name Jesus that we did this. And it was the name that the builders rejected. But he's become the head cornerstone. In other words, a cornerstone is the fundamental foundation of a structure to keep it right. And so Jesus is the fundamental foundation of the structure of who we are. If we don't have Jesus, we're going to fall. I don't care how much prayer you get. I don't care how much you tell the church to pray for you until you get Jesus for yourself. You gonna start going back to the same stuff you've been asking him to get you out of, but you got to get Jesus in your own soul. I can pray for your situation until I'm blue in the face, but until you get Jesus down on the inside and be able to pray for your situation yourself, I'm simply putting a band-aid over a bullet hole. Is there anybody in here that knows that you have Jesus down on the inside? There's something about the name Jesus. You see, I, I'm apostolic. I was born and bred. But some people have lost the fundamentals of apostolics. Apostolics is not how you dress. It's not even how you look. But being an apostolic is believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Being baptized in Jesus' name. Coming up and receiving the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. So, Peter said it was by the name of Jesus, but he was filled with what? The Holy Ghost. So, I ask this church today, church family, what will we be known to the community, yes? Will we be known for having the biggest Bible class? Would that 
validate us? Would we want them to know that we have one of the greatest music ministries? Would that validate us? Would we be known to have one of the strongest youth departments? Would that validate us? Would we be able to blow our own horn and say, look at me and look what I have done? Would that validate us? Or will the Holy Ghost validate who we are? You see, I want this church to be known for the power of God. I want this church to be known that when folk from the community go to every other church, they just want deliverance. They can't find it anywhere, but they come into the house of God where the Holy Ghost is. You can run across the street, but deliverance is in the Holy Ghost. You can have the biggest praise team, but deliverance is in the Holy Ghost. You can have the best choir, but deliverance is in the Holy Ghost. And so we must learn how to receive the Holy Ghost. And we must come to a place where we call on the name of Jesus. Now, Erica, I'm feeling it. Did you see that? I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it right there. That's my favorite move. There's something about the name Jesus that even the old folk used to sing songs about it. And they would say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus demons will have to flee oh tell me who can go before us when we call on God's great name that name is What's your name? What's your name? Jesus! Hey! Some people call him all over the Bible. And I'm going to close now. But I want to make the roll call. Ephesians 2 and 20. Call him the cornerstone. Colossians 1 and 15. Call him the firstborn of all generations. First Timothy says he's the king of kings. And the lord of lords. John 8 and 12 says he is the light of the world. Isaiah 9 and 6 says he's the prince of peace. Luke 1 and 35 says he's the son of God. Isaiah 9 and 6 calls him Emmanuel. Interpreted God with us. Acts 10 and 36 says he is the Lord of all. First John 5 and 20 calls him the true God. Hebrews 12 and 2 says he's the author and finisher of our faith. John 3 and 35 calls him the bread of life. Matthew 9 and 15 calls him the bridegroom. Romans 11 and 26 calls him the deliverer. John 10 and 11 calls him the good shepherd John 1 and 29 calls him the lamb of God 1 Corinthians 10 and 4 says he is my rock Matthew 1 and 21 call him savior John 15 and 1 call him the true vine John 14 and 6 says he's the way the truth and the life and I was Hebrew I'll call him Yeshua. 